Welcome to another short video by the Schneider Electric Solar Team. In today's video, we're just going to do a walkthrough of the Connects Insight 2 solar monitoring platform. We're looking at some of the new features that were introduced in the latest version of the Insight 2 platform. The first new feature we want to look at is the alarms and warnings analysis. So you find the alarms and warnings analysis under the performance tab. And then from there, you navigate through the drop down menu and go to the alarms and warnings analysis page. Here you can see your top 10 um, alarms, top 10 active alarm duration uh, warnings and warning active warning duration um, over the lifetime of your plant. On this site we're looking at Eric's site and on Eric's site you can see here that um, DC over voltage uh, alarm followed by AI under voltage, DC under voltage, etc, etc, etc are the most common alarms that he's seen on these sites. This is a useful tool for analyzing you know, common faults or alarms or warnings on any of your sites so that you can pinpoint um, exactly where risks or, or um, challenges may be on your system. Um, so it makes it easier to, to troubleshoot and correct um, you know, anything that needs to be corrected on the system um, whenever you need to do remote support. The next, uh, the next page we want to look at is again, so you go to the performance uh, tab and then under the performance tab through the drop down menu, you look at your benefits page and the benefits page shows you your savings um, in terms of, of, you know, either financial or carbon emission savings of your plant over a period of time. So on this screen, um, let's switch sites here for a second. So if we look at Mike's site and we look at um, today, you can see that the date has been adjusted to today. Um, you can see that in the early hours of, of the, the morning, um, he was consuming uh, electricity from the grid and this was costing him uh, money. So uh, the system calculates what, what his running costs were. And then as the sun comes up, of course, the sun starts producing and instead of, um, you know, additional costs being incurred, he is now generating um, savings. So, so these, these values are, are calculated based on, of course, the kilowatt um, production of the system or the kilowatt consumption of the loads connected to the system um, multiplied by the, the dollar rate um, per cost of or, or per unit of energy consumed from the grid or the um, dollar rate per unit of energy produced from solar. So one can enter those, those um, uh, units of energy under your configuration tab. I'll just show you this quickly. So if we go there and you go to the financial settings tab, you can select your currency from a whole list of currencies um, from around the world and you can select your price per kilowatt hour of solar your cost per kilowatt hour of, of grid power um, or grid energy and your cost per kilowatt hour of, of energy produced from the generator. You can also enter your total system cost and your annual energy consumption. Um, and this allows you to calculate system payback periods and return on investment um, again under the, uh, the benefits page. So here you can see the payback tracker and what it's looking at is the investment. So this is the cost of your system and your um, to date payback or the the cumulative savings generated, um, uh, you know, by solar production or the other means um, off of running the system. So here again, based on the rates that were entered under the configuration tab, it's calculating your your battery month to date, um, you know, savings your grid month to date savings and generator, which, which you haven't really been running. Um, and then in terms of, of your additional financial savings and um, carbon emissions reductions, it, it uses a, a formula to calculate um, the, the equivalent amount of trees planted and carbon or kilograms of carbon emissions avoided um, to, to give you an indication of just how much your system is doing um, for, for A, your pocket and B, the environment. Now we can also switch this to a, a longer term view. So if we want to look at the you know, total savings for the month of May, we can do that and it will load. 
once it's loaded, you can see for each day in, in May um, what the the costs of the the energy consumed from the grid were versus the savings um, generated off of the solar production. And again, this is this is calculated based on the inputs that the user has has um, you know given the system under the configuration tab. And it just gives you a nice visual um, sense of, of how well your system is doing. If you want to change it to a, uh, a graph, a line graph, you can do that by clicking on this little icon at the top here. Or if you want to add it to your dashboard, you can do that too. You can also export this widget into different um, uh, formats, including PDF, PNG, and Excel or CSV. The next really neat feature that's been added to Insight 2 is found under the reporting tab. So if we go to reporting, you'll notice that there's a new um, sub menu or um, sub tab added here, report manager. So previously reports were available and you could go and select your site, select the date range and select the type of report that you would like to generate. The report would then be generated and you could go in and you could effectively export that report as a PDF or a PNG and do with it what you wanted. Now we've added a report manager um, and the report manager allows you to schedule your reporting. So you can go and select your site. So if we just make sure we select the same site as we have here, um, you can select the frequency. So whether you want to run it daily or monthly, and you can say whether it needs to be an active schedule and hit create. Once you hit create, it will tell you that you've successfully created your report and your reports should be sent through to your emails. If you decide you no longer want to run these reports or want to change the frequency, you can either edit and go in and change details there, or you can simply delete and remove that report from your list. You can set up reports for all the different sites connected to your system. Um, and this is a nice way to, without having to access the Insight platform, to get a sense of how your systems are doing on a daily or a monthly basis. The final update I would like to point out is on the site energy comparison window. So if we navigate to the site energy comparison window, you'll notice that we've now added transparency to the graphing. So what this allows you to do is to look at your solar energy production versus grid consumption um, versus a range of other energy um, uh, values over time and, and see how your system is doing or how these different, uh, different inputs are, are um, comparing or running uh, compared to each other. You can again switch from a, a line graph to a, a bar graph and this um, data can be exported either as a PDF or a PNG um, for analysis or use in other, in other um, tools. So again, just to, to show or illustrate, one can switch this to a monthly view and if we look at the monthly view um, for the site, we'll notice that, that there's been, you know, we, let's say we want to look just at solar, so we can turn off all the other elements of your system. And you can see what your solar production for each day of the month looked like. If we wanted to introduce load and see how the load compared to our solar um, yield, you'll see that on most days of the month, um, our solar production was a lot higher than the actual load. So it shows us that our system was doing pretty well. And the next question may be, okay, well, did we export excess solar production to the grid? So we can turn on grid export. And yes, in a lot of cases, you'll notice that um, there was a fair amount of, of energy exported back to the grid. So here, 26 kilowatt hours exported to the grid, um, 30 kilowatt hours uh, consumed as load. Some of that may have come from the grid. The site energy comparison window is probably the most powerful tool to analyze system performance over time. So I've switched it into bar graph view, as you can see here. And what I'd like to do is just disable a number of the um, elements on the graph. So we start off with just looking at solar production on a day to day basis for the month of May. So you can see here that that, you know, most days have have done pretty, pretty well with, let's say, just an average of about I'd say 30, 35 kilowatt hours of, of um, solar production on a, on a daily basis. And the next thing we may want to see or, or look at is, um, you know, how load, so load compared to our solar production on a daily basis. So if we bring in load, and it's as simple as clicking on the load, um, you know, uh, header over there, you can see that, that on most days in the month of May, 
um, the, the solar production was, was quite a lot higher than, than the load consumed, or the load energy consumption on the site. Um, and, and the question may be, okay, well, so, so what did we do with you know, that, that excess solar production? And we can look at what happened to it by introducing or reintroducing grid export. So we can see here that, that most days um, excess solar would have been exported into the grid. So here you can see on the 5th of May, for example, um, my total uh, consumption or load on that day was 30 kilowatt hours. Um, my total production, solar production, was 55.74 kilowatt hours. And my total grid export was 37.36 kilowatt hours. Now, of course, those, those don't add up. There must have, there's some shortfall. Um, in other words, if, if we subtract from the solar production, the grid export, we don't get to the, the load. Um, and we can look at what the grid consumption was for that day. Because at different times of the day, you know, you may have had um, uh, grid consumption and then later on during the peak of the day they may not have as been as much uh, a load so so excess solar would have been exported um, while while you know the, the solar is being harvested optimally so you can see there there was some grid consumption 16.68 kilowatt hours um, with grid export solar production and load now we may want to say okay well the 5th of may looked really interesting but let's look at it in more detail and over time so we drill down and we say, okay, we want to look at days and we want to go to the 5th of May. So we select that. We drill down to the 5th of May. And now we can see the graph for this side for the 5th of May. Um, so you can see in the early hours of the day, there's load, so energy consumption. And most of that's coming from the grid, right? So you can see the, the grid is actually providing the energy. And then around 6 a.m., you can see little bits of solar coming into your into your energy mix so the sun's busy coming up and then throughout the day you know the sun comes up and your grid consumption drops away almost completely for most of the day and then in the evening again your, your grid consumption starts to pick up um, so you can see that that during the day you know the the difference between the load and the the solar production is really your grid export we may say, okay, well, we want to see this in a more visually easy to understand or track um, way. And all we do is switch out of the, the bar graph into the line chart view, and you get a nice visual like that.